Hello friends and welcome to Classroom TV. Friends, whatever goes up, it must fall down. It may be a ball or it may be an apple or it may be a pen, pencil, whatever it may be. Whatever goes up, must fall down. But what about satellite? When we send satellite into space, it remains there and it, don't, it doesn't fall down. It just revolve around the earth. It revolves around the earth because of the sideway motion of the satellite. This sideway motion, that means the circular motion of the satellite. Earth's gravity, Earth's gravitational force continuously pulls the satellite towards its center. But due to the circular motion, it revolves around the earth. Think, if there is no sideway motion, if there is no circular motion, then eventually all the satellites, all, all the satellite must fall down on the earth or it gets attracted towards the center of earth. Friends, if there is no gravitational force, if there is no gravitational pull, then also the satellite, it flies off in tangential direction. So all these things happens, that means the object falls on the ground or satellite revolves around the earth they are due to the gravity. Friend, the same reason can be given why moon revolves around the earth or earth, it revolves around the sun. Friends, these are the problems which are coming in our mind or these are the solutions for that or this is the reason for that. But think in 16th century, Newton also faced the same problems. He also want to know why the apple falls down and why not the moon. He was very much confused and therefore he decided to study Galileo and Kepler. Friends, he studied Galileo and Kepler and came with the law which is called as universal law of gravity. That means universal law of gravitation friends if we see the statement of that law it is very easy every object it attracts every other object in this universe with a definite force and that force is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them look we will make the formula from, from that. That means according to this law, you can see the law in this video on your screen. See the statement. In first sentence, first of all, this force, every object attracts every other object in the universe. Suppose these are two objects. This is A, this is B with masses m1 and m2 respectively so according to the first sentence of the law what is it every object attract every other object with a definite force suppose the force between these two is f friends if f force is applied by this a object on b then at the same time same amount of force is applied by b on a. So according to first sentence, this F is directly proportional to the product of their masses. So it is directly proportional to M1 into M2. According to second sentence, what is it? It is inversely proportional, that means the force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Suppose these, these two objects are placed at a distance d from one another. Then f is inversely proportional to square of the distance bet between them. Friends, you must know 
if the objects are spherical then their centers the distance between their centers it is taken as d but if the objects they have irregular shape then the center of masses are taken that means the distance between their center of masses are taken there okay so f is directly proportional to m1 into m2 and f is inversely proportional to d square if we combine these two statements or these two sentences we get f is directly proportional to m1 m2 upon d square m1 m2 upon d square so suppose this is equation number 1 so from this equation we can see f is directly proportional to m1 m2 that means product of their masses and f is inversely proportional to square of the distance between them but friends whenever we use this formula in mathematics or for mathematical application it is very difficult to use this sign proportionality sign therefore every time we convert this proportionality sign into equal to sign and whenever we convert proportionality sign into equal to sign at that time we have to multiply by a constant to the rhs that means right hand side so this statement it converts f is equal to capital g into m1 into m2 upon d square so this is equation number 2 where g is universal gravitational constant g is called as universal gravitational constant it is a constant because we replace this sign into equal to sign therefore we multiply by a constant and that is universal gravitational constant i will write here the equation f is equal to g m1 m2 upon d square friends from this equation we can understand if i double that means the question can be asked into board exam that what happened to the or what happened to the force of gravity if we double the mass of one of the object suppose we double m1 then what effect on force so this gravitational force let us say this m1 if we double the mass of any one object then f is equal to capital g instead of m1 what we are taking we are taking 2 m1 into m2 upon d square so it is nothing but 2 into g m1 m2 upon d square so that means if we double the mass of any object then definitely the force also doubled here okay instead of that we take a simple example suppose we take the objects m1 and m2 both m1 equal to m2 is equal to 10 kg suppose we take an example and calculate the value of force between them so f is equal to capital g into 10 into 10 divided by suppose d that means distance d is equal to 1 meter that means these two objects are placed at 1 meter distance from each other so divided by 1 square so we get 100 capital g it is the force between these two objects now double one of the mass of one of the objects suppose instead of 10 we take 20 okay double the mass of one of the object so calculate f f is equal to capital g into instead of 10 we take 20 into 10 divided by 1 square so we get 
टू हंड्रेड जी सो फ्रॉम दिस टू वी कैन इजिली से दैट इफ वी डबल द मास ऑफ एनी वन ऑब्जेक्ट देन डेफिनेटली द फोर्स ऑफ अट्रैक्शन बिटवीन देन दैट इज नथिंग बट द ग्रेविटेशनल फोर्स इट ऑल्सो डबल now let us see what happened if we double the distance between them we will take here we will take the simple example as we have taken now m1 is equal to m2 is equal to 10 kg and instead of d is equal to 1 we take d is equal to 2 meter that means if we double the distance between the two objects then what is the effect on force f so what is f f is equal to g m1 m2 upon d square so it is g into m1 is 10 into 10 divided by instead of 1 we take 2 square so it is g into 100 divided by 4 so it is 25 g and what will be the previous answer it is 100 g okay let us take one here so we get answer here f is equal to g into 10 into 10 divided by 1 square so it is 100 g so what happened if we double the distance between the two object then what is the effect on force we can easily see the effect the force becomes 1/4 so these examples or such any one example can be asked into exam that's why we take here okay so let us come to the original point f is equal to what is the law of gravity f is equal to capital g m1 m2 upon d square where g is a universal gravitational constant m1 and m2 are the masses of the two object any two objects which are placed at a distance of d from one another okay friends now if we take if we suppose now we have to calculate what is capital g how we define capital g how we define universal gravitational constant it is very simple take m1 is equal to m2 is equal to 1 kg that means the two objects are of unit mass then suppose take d is equal to 1 meter that means they are placed at a unit distance from one another that means the this m1 m2 they are of the mass 1 kg plus at a distance of 1 meter from each other then calculate f f is equal to capital g so how could we define capital g universal gravitational constant friends universal gravitational constant is nothing but the force of gravity it is nothing but the gravitational force between two unit masses placed at unit distance from one another simple definition what is it universal gravitational constant is nothing but the gravitational force between two unit masses unit masses means the mass is unit means one between two unit masses placed at a unit distance from one another friends we can easily calculate the gravitational force between any two objects if we know the mass and if we can measure the distance between them that means if you and your friend they are sitting side by side then definitely by using this formula we can easily find out the gravitational force between them but for that we require the value of g g it is nothing but universal gravitational constant and its value it is 
experimentally proved near about 111 years after the discovery of this law after the discovery of universal gravitational law newton's law after the discovery of this law 111 years we don't know the value of g but after that it is experimentally proved that g is equal to 6.673 into 10 raised to minus 11 this is the value of g it is constant everywhere in the universe entire universe the value of g is constant and therefore it is called as universal gravitational constant and it is 6.67 into 10 raised to minus 11. Friends, what is the unit of this g? The unit of any quantity we can determine easily with the help of formula. Now take the same formula f is equal to capital G m1 m2 upon d square so if we want to find out the unit of g then take all these things to the lhs so capital g is equal to f force into d square divided by m1 m2 from this we know the unit of f it is nothing but newton unit of d d it is nothing but the distance and therefore we measure it into meter and unit of mass is kg so what is the unit of capital g it is newton this is nothing but meter square newton meter square per kg raised to 2 or kg square because m1 into m2 so it is kg into kg so it is kg square we can take it up so it is nothing but newton meter square kg raised to minus 2 so this is the unit of universal gravitational constant its value is 6.673 into 10 raised to minus 11 newton meter square kg raised to minus 2 so this is nothing but universal gravitational constant and the law is universal law of gravitation friends by this law right now let us see one example more if two friends of 100 kg each 100 kg each They are sitting near to each other at a distance of 1 meter. Then we calculate the force of attraction between them. That means the gravitational force between them. Let us calculate. It is very easy. You can solve such many examples with you and your friend. So what is formula F is equal to G M1 M2 upon D square. So it is nothing but 6.67 into 10 raised to minus 11 into m1 into m2 m2 that means 100 into 100 divided by d square d square is nothing but 1 d is 1 meter 1 square is 1 so calculate it it is nothing but 6.67 into 10 raised to here it is minus 11 it is 10 raised to 4 here so, if we take, it is nothing but 10 raised to minus 7. So, friends, this force of attraction, it is of the range of 10 raised to minus 7 Newton. The unit of force is Newton. So, it is that much small force of the range of 10 raised to minus 7. And therefore, we really don't feel the force. We don't feel the force. Because there are so many objects around me. And there is a force of attraction between, between each and every object. Any two objects. According to Newton, any two objects, there is a force of attraction between them. 
but I really don't feel it because the table is there I am here I am here the board is here there must be the force of attraction between us but I don't feel it why I don't feel it because of the very small amount of force gravitational force it is very small very very small but it is a long distance force but it is very weak force if we take a small magnet then that magnet can attract the iron nail towards it opposite to the gravitational force that means the magnetic force of that small magnet it is larger than the gravitational force that much weak force is it we calculate the force between two masses of 100 kg it is just of the range of 10 raised to minus 7 newton what is one newton force if we take a 100 gram coin if we take a coin on our in my hand suppose this duster it weighs 100 grams 100 gram only if i place it on my hand then the force which is applied by this duster on my hand it is nothing but one newton force it is so small and the force which is applied by the this gravitational force it is nothing but of the range of 10 raised to minus 7 okay so friends that's why we don't feel we really don't feel the force but this force can hold the entire universe together and it is possible only due to the huge masses of the planet huge mass of the sun and due to these huge masses they can keep all together this gravitational force can keep all these objects celestial bodies together because of the huge masses okay friends so this is nothing but gravitational law universal gravitational law friends let us see in last lecture we have seen Kepler's law in this law of gravitation F is directly proportional to m1 m2 upon d square d is the distance between the two objects this inverse proportionality on the distance inverse proportionality of the square of the distance on the square of the distance which is given by Newton the force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from where this comes Newton assume or Newton get that idea by Kepler's law and that means Kepler's law help Newton to find out the inverse proportionality on the square of the distance so how Kepler help Newton in finding this equation that we will see in next lecture okay friends thank you